live crew the year before. All right, we're ready for our last talk of the evening. It's uh, with Kate, and it's going to be up, up close to the main monster. I haven't even started yet. Okay, so um, what is the main monster? First, for, um, first, I guess I should introduce myself for new people. I'm Kate Scott Nicky. Um, it's my third year at Kansas Fest. Uh, in my thank you. In my <laughs> real life, I'm a teacher, and um, this is actually not something I've used in my classroom, but I just I like teaching people stuff, so I try to present every year. The main monster is this thing that if you've been here before or if you've been uh, if you've seen it up in the common room, it is a controller that I built. I call it the monster because, well, in in 39 minutes, you'll know why I call it the monster. <laughs> MAME, I, somebody asked what MAME stands for. And MAME stands for Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. Um, it does a lot of other things too. I know that MAME supports the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Apple II, whatever. Um, I'm focusing on the, the arcade version of it because I have other things in my life that do a better, that I like better for emulating the rest of it. So what am I gonna talk about? I'm gonna talk about how I built this thing. I built this thing. I, this, this, was, this started out as a slab of MDF and a dream. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the decisions I have to make and you have to make too if you're going to uh, do something like this. I'm going to talk about my prototyping product process. This is not the, this is not, I did not just this is not appear fully formed out of the ether. There was a lot of work. I'm going to talk about what I did to find the parts. I'm going to talk about building the thing. You get to hear all of my horror stories. It'll be fun. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the art on the top, how I did that, other things I could have done. I'm going to kind of throw some ideas out there. I'm going to talk about how I went the wiring. Uh, and I'm going to talk about places where I went to get help. This is not an exhaustive uh, presentation on everything you need to know about arcade machines. What am I not going to talk about? I'm not going to talk about setting up. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I meander. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about setting up MAME. Yeah, I know in the description it says she's going to talk about software. She started doing slides, and she started doing slides, and it went from one slide to two slides to four slides to three. You know what? This is a whole other presentation. So I scrapped it. I am not going to talk about, I am not going to have the Mac versus PC versus Raspberry Pi debate with you. That is something you can have on your own time. I nailed it on a Mac Mini because I felt like it. And I'm not going to talk about building an actual cabinet, mostly because I don't have enough room in my house for an actual cabinet, so I've never built one. Um, I don't want to have the CRT versus LCD debate with you. You can have that on your own time. I live in a very small house. So the first things you have to think about, what do you want to play? What games do you want? That is going to inform what you put on your console. My watch is not doing what I want it to do. Do you want a spinner? Do you want to play Tempest? Who likes Tempest? Right. So, who wants to play Tempest with? A, who wants to play Tempest with a joystick? <laughs> Bingo. Uh, who likes Centipede? Who wants to play centipede with a joystick? Exactly. Do you want a trackball? I decided I wanted these two things. Do you want light guns? Um, light guns. How do you do light guns? There are, um, there are light gun solutions for modern uh, LCD monitors. Um, TLDR, light guns don't work on LCDs. There is a company that does make a light gun that is based on essentially Wiimote technology that does work on LCDs. Do you want, and that is the next thing I want to put on this. I didn't have the money to do it. This is not a cheap trip. I'll just say that up front. I'm in, I don't like to think about how much money is sitting in front of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really, because I want to play Area 51, I want to play Time Crisis. 
Is there any weird specialty hardware? Um, here's what, yeah, Tron is the one there. Yeah, I want to play Tron. Tron needs a, a special type of joystick. It's like, it's, uh, I never, I don't, I'm not into Tron, so I didn't put it on here. But you can go out and you'll see this joystick is for Tron. It has, it reads in a very specific way. Um, there are some games that you would have to literally build and engineer the hardware for yourself. The old Star Wars game where you actually were, like you had the yoke with the, of the X-Wing and you were piloting, that's not emulated really anywhere. If you wanted to, you would literally have to build that from scratch. And if you do, uh, let us know because everybody's looking for a solution for Star Wars because we all want to be Luke Skywalker. And you have to decide how you're going to control the controls. And I don't mean what's going to be on the other end. I mean something, you know, this is the, 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 you have to decide what your black box is. What are you going to use to get these signals to whatever's running your software? There are a lot of different, there are a ton of different solutions. I did the one. <coughs> this is what I use. It's called the iPack. I really like this, and they're not paying me to say it. This is what it looks like. Wow. That needs a book. I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna pick it up at the end too. Oh, they'll be there while I'll stand here for. Um, the iPack is a keyboard emulator. Um, MAME, when you get into the arcade end of it, MAME is hardwired to look for certain things. Up, first player up is up arrow, first player down is down arrow, first player button one, two, three, it's all, you know, first player point in a spot, first player uh, start is, uh, I, don't even remember, I don't even remember what it is anymore, so don't quote me. When you first plug this in, the Mac, I use it I, because I built it on a Mac, Mac joystick support is questionable. Don't buy the cheap Chinese Yinmos that you find on eBay because they won't work on a Mac. I don't have it anymore. I gave it to the uh, computer science teacher at our school for his kids to play with. Um, this thing, it sees it as a keyboard. I plugged this in the first time and uh, OS X said, I see you plugged a new keyboard into the system. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so whenever, you know, and so it wired this, it's, it's a screw, you put the wire in, you run it to the switch, and so when I press this, it sees control. When I press this, it sees whatever button on the keyboard MAME is expecting, and it works really well. Um, I got the Jinmo working on one player, but I could never get two players to, to work properly. If you're building it on Windows or you're building it on a Pi, then your mileage may vary, but this, um, it came, they come out of the UK, shipping's a little expensive, but it was worth every penny I spent on it because it was super, super easy to put together. Okay, I know what I want. I know I want two joysticks and I know I want six buttons straight because I'm old school and I know I want a spinner so I can play Tempest and I know I want a trackball so I can play Centipede. How am I gonna put all this together in a, an attractive package? And people fight over this. I took a lot of flat from a lot of people because they said, well, the spinner should be down here in the corner so you don't hit it with the trackball. I'm like, I am not that violent with my trackball. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody is that violent with their trackball, I don't think I want them playing with my toy. <laughs> so there's a couple things you can do. If you know CAD, you can use CAD. I use uh, some sort of, I can't even remember, and I can't find it on my computer. I think I deleted it. Um, but I found this app for a comp I, uh, that would basically kick out a CAD file of a design I put together. But what I actually started with, um, you, can you buy one of these? Yes. Are they as cool as this one? No. Because this one's custom, and I made it all by myself. Um, XArcade is the company that's known for making these things. I took their layout and I started there. Okay, how far do they have their buttons from their joysticks? Okay, how, you know, how far apart are the buttons? That sort of thing. But then I took it and I manipulated it to get what I wanted. <coughs> what did I do? I started printing. I printed things at actual size. 
How did you do this? I used Excel, and I did, Excel will kick out, if you, tell, if you put a 24 by 36 inch photograph or picture into Excel, and you print it, and you tell it to print tiled, it will kick out like 30 sheets, and then you just have to put them together like a jigsaw puzzle. And then I got some cardboard and started building actual cardboard prototypes because, and making people play them and tell me what, I, what they thought. The buttons are too far apart. The buttons are too close together. Um, you know, I think the joystick needs to be a little bit to the left. I think the joystick needs to be a little, little right. Enlist your friend. I had my, my, I, I inflicted this on our video game club at school. They were not actually very impressed. So this is when it started. This was my first prototype layout. What I ended up doing was I cut out, this is, this, um, this is actual one and an eighth inch dots that I could tape and manipulate. And you can see where I was whiting stuff out. You can see I was whiting stuff out when I changed my mind. So I went through and I came up with something like, this is, you know, okay, I'm gonna put the trackball here, I'm gonna put the hole for the spinner here, and then I found out the spinner only needed the, one of these holes, so whatever. And then I started building prototypes, which I brought. <laughs> I did not put them back together, they, I don't know, I honestly don't know if they're going to go together. But I built the sides with the little, because I put the coin in buttons on, you have to have a coin in button, a lot of them put it on the side. It's a good place to put it. Uh, if I ever want to get into pin mame, which they don't make for Mac, mm -hmm. then I could, you know, use it for pin mame. Pin mame is pinball That's, uh, emulation. This is the first one I did. At first, I did have the trackball on top, and. That was very, very quickly I discovered that that was a bad idea because if the spinner's down here and the trackball's up here and you're doing this, you're going to, you get some really interesting road rash from your spinner <laughs> on your arm. <laughs> so I also put it together so I could see how big it was. I'm a visual person, I need to actually, and I'm a you know, kinesthetic person, I need to have things I can manipulate. This is my living room floor, this is my entertainment center, and I knew I, how much space is this thing going to take up in my living room. So I started building prototypes. This is the weird shape that the trackball was underneath. Um, this, is the, this is the file that that weird pseudocad program I downloaded kicked out for me. Um, it kicked out a CAD file, like a straight CAD file. But um, the trick there, there are um, freeware things that will convert like a CAD file to a PDF. Or if you're me, you go to the CAD teacher in your school and you say, can you make this into a PDF for me? And she does. <laughs> so how did you do that? I went to my, my our CAD teacher, I was like, help. So I started, you know, with, okay, now, okay. and the other thing that you want to prototype very carefully, is the pitch. You don't want it to be level. You kind of, if you think about every, you know, if you go to an arcade and you think about all the machines, the control panel is tilted up towards you to make it more comfortable. What pitch do you want? Um, I'm gonna say I got a lot of these measurements from the X arcade, but this was, so I ended up, you know, this is the pitch I want, this is the size I want, Okay, this, let's see how strong this cardboard really is. And start attaching stuff to it. Like I said, this is not the place you want your spinner. <laughs> this was a bad idea. And in this case, this is the first one I did. The buttons are a little bit farther, it doesn't really show in the photograph, but the buttons are a little bit farther apart. And this is the one where people were telling me that the buttons were too far apart and they couldn't, like, playing fighting games, you couldn't do your combos properly. I like fighting games, so I have a bunch of fighting games on here. That's why I did the straight six. I'm old school. Uh, so I got the, you know, I got the parts. I got the stuff wired up. The trifle's just sitting on top for now. I'll get into that in a little bit. I also started, obviously, playing with uh, design ideas. 
Civil War, the Civil War hype was just starting when I was doing this project, and I am unabashedly hashtag Team Iron Man. <laughs> so I decided, I thought it would be really cool to do an Iron Man versus Captain America Civil War theme for my controller. So this was just kind of my beginning of the kind of what can I do design stage. And then I built another prototype, and I'm going to pass these around. That has, these have been in the back of a closet. That actually has everything mounted on it. Um, I ended up, I did end up figuring out how to undermount this. I don't have a picture of that. But you can see, if you look really close, right here, you can see where I changed my mind and I had to do a fill-in so I could put the spinner there. So that's what's cool about cardboard. You can change your mind. Save your scratch, change your mind. You see, when I pass this around, you can see how much tape and stuff is on here. Um, I did end up, and I'm going to talk about how I did the undermounting in a little bit. And this actually, so I'll pass that around. Um, this actually hung out on my living room floor for, I did this, I finished prototyping in October and I did not get a chance to actually start building until my summer vacation. So I used it like this for, you know, six or seven months. You could theoretically stop here. I wasn't going to stop there, but you know, if you really wanted to do something, if you wanted to do this on the quick and dirty, you can do it. If you don't have enough cardboard, you can do it. Where'd you get all those really cool parts? There are lots of places to get the really cool parts. Uh, and again, debates I'm not going to have with you. I am not going to have um, who makes the best joystick, who makes the best button, who makes the best this, who makes the best that. I'm not that hardcore. It does not have to, you know, I am not HAP or die. HAP is a uh, well-known manufacturer of arcade components. I think some of my stuff is HAP, but some of it isn't because, again, I did not have that kind of money. I was not paying like five dollars for a button. Each one of those buttons, each one of these buttons was about a dollar and a half, including the micro switch. Um, you can go out on eBay and buy kits. If you, if you Google arcade controller kit on eBay or put it into eBay, you're going to get something that kicks out. It has the you know six buttons and six, uh, six buttons of this color, six buttons of that color. It's going to have joysticks. Can have this, that, the next thing. Uh, like I said, the Jinmo controller that usually comes with these doesn't play well with Max. Uh, I didn't test it with anything else. I gave, like I said, I basically got rid of it. Um, where did I get my stuff? Groovy Game Gear is a it's GroovyGameGear.com is a really good site. I got the everything there. I got the buttons there. I got the spinner there. I got the joysticks there. I got the trackball there. I got the T-molding and the special router bit that you need to install it there. Uh, I basically, I sent them, I got a big box one day in the mail and it was super heavy because the trackball was really heavy <laughs> and it was really cool. And like I said, Ultimark is in the UK, that's where I got the controller board and one of these years when I have the scratch, I'm going to get the uh, LCD compatible light gun. And they have things like, you know, mount it, just I'm probably just going to mount it up here on the side is the point, like cut into the T-molding, but I'll figure that out when I get there. That's a problem for future me. Remember, you get what you pay for. And then you, you know, think about how much engineering and wiring do you want to do. I'm not super hardware engineer like a lot of you are. I really did go for it. I'm going to win when, when I explain a lot of this. I went for the path of least resistance, which is why this has this on it. Um, the spinner and the trackball each have their own board. I'll lift this up. Uh, this is the uh, this is the iPad. Um, I think this one is the trackball. This one is the spinner. They both came as kits from Groovy Game Gear, so I bought the spinner and it, you know, it was the spinner and the controller. It was the, the track and the controller. 
people want to get close and take pictures uh, at the end, you feel the, you're more than welcome to come up and I'll hold it up so you can take pictures. And this is also going to be available online after KFest for you to download and the pictures will be on there. Um, yes, you can wire up a board that will do all of it on one USB. I'm not hardware inclined enough to do that, so I, did the, I took the easy way out. I was more interested in the, artist, in the artistry than the technical stuff. So I've got this box of parts and I've got this piece of cardboard and life is good and summer comes and it's time to actually build this thing. And I built this the summer uh, that I came to the, the, when I brought this two years ago to the first K-Fest, it had been done for about a week. First of all, what do you want to use? You can use wood. You can use metal if you want to, you, know, you can use plexi if you want to get into that. You can use cardboard. Go you. Uh, I use something called medium density fiberboard. You get it at Home Depot. It comes in 4x4, 4x8 sheets. Uh, this, I got a fun lucky. I managed to get it in a 4x4 because a 4x8 sheet's not going to fit in my car. Um, medium density fiberboard has some pros and cons. It's heavy. That could be a pro or a con, depending on what you're doing. I wanted this to be a little bit heavy because if I am doing this, I don't want it to be going across the floor while I'm rolling <laughs> it. So I wanted it to be a little bit heavy. Um, I wanted something that wasn't going to require well, a ton of standing, more on that later. Uh, MDF starts out very smooth. The thing about MDF is you can't get it wet. It's basically um, glue and sawdust that has been pressed together to make really, really hard, but really, 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 it's an interesting, it's an interesting time. Um, because it's made out of sawdust and glue, when you start working with it, uh, do this outside. And I don't mean in your garage, I mean outside. You will have dust. There is still dust in my backyard. As a matter of fact, the other day I was looking, I was looking for something in my shed and I found little tiny pieces of MDF. <laughs> uh, but if you're young, if you want if you want if you have metal metal working experience and you want to punch this out of metal, if you want to, you know, play around with plexi and do like cool like underlighting and stuff, you can totally do that. And yeah, you can get up you can get light up joysticks and light up buttons, you can go as crazy with this as you want. And then you get to play with power tools. It was so fun. Yes. This is I came I'm not going to do which I'm not going to do here. Sorry. I didn't think rockers would be happy if I made sawdust everywhere. What did I use? I used a saw uh, uh, I don't I have a very small house. I do not have a whole lot of room to work. I used a saber saw to do all of the initial cutting out, so I cut out the top and the sides with a saber saw. Jigsaw. If you have a table saw, it would work a lot better unless you're doing curves. Curves you're going to want to use a saber saw for. Um, I had to work with what I had. There are some straight cuts where, yes, I would have really liked to have my my dad's my dad lives is five hours away from me, but he has a full wood shop, and I was like, I don't know why I didn't do this when I was home, but I'm not that smart. You will need drills and bits. Um, this is my drill. These are actually my tools that I took pictures of. Please do not buy cordless drills. You'll make kittens cry. <laughs> no, honestly, um, when they say dense, when they say medium density fiberboard, it's dense. <laughs> it's real dense. Huh. If you have a battery operated drill, you're going to get one whole drill and you're going to put charge battery. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding. We use battery operated tools in the shop when I work with the drama kids, and I've seen about how much work they actually do. Uh, the hardest thing to find was honestly the one and, eight, eight, one and an eighth inch, very weird size, spade bit. Um, this is what I used to drill almost all of the holes. The only thing I did not 
thrill with that was the trackball. Um, the trackball, I had some help from a friend. Um, a friend of mine has a drill press and he has a um, variable size uh, saw. Uh, no, it's not really a hole saw. It's this gizmo that will bit that it can it can be a hole saw of any size. Step down bit maybe. Yeah, something like that. I I just I was trying to figure out how to do it, and he's like, oh yeah, I have that. So I went over to his house, and he's met my best friend's husband, and he helped me cut out the trackball. Other than that, I did all of this in my backyard. Yeah. Um. Get yourself a hand sander, the mouse. It's called a mouse. Because um, whenever you cut, you are going to want to sand, especially, you know, depending on what kind of paint you want to get into, you do want nice surfaces. And you need a router. No, not that kind. <laughs> this kind. This is a router that is used. This, routers are for making cuts, hollowing things out. And when you come up, when at the end, I'm going to invite people to come up and look at this from underneath. Um, the joysticks and the trackball, there is about an eighth of an inch of the wood left between the underneath and above. They sit almost flush with the top of the controller. If you look at the trackball, you can see the black rim that's around it. That's actually the plastic. That's the plastic housing of the trackball. Um, some there are ways you can do it without routing. I chose to do. That's the, probably the hard. It's harder to do the routing, but you're going to be a lot happier with the results because you're going to have a lot better control over your joystick. You're going to have a lot better uh, reach of your trackball. Trackballs you almost have to undermount. Um, to undermount all of the things, the joint uh, undermount means there are no screws on the top of the controller. Everything is screwed in from underneath. I'll show you some pictures of that in a second. But if you're going to undermount, you you absolutely almost have to do this. And now we build, and now we fight. Mm -hmm. This was a long process. And yes, yeah, it was like two weeks before K-Fest, and I'm like, I have to finish this because I have to take this to K-Fest because these guys are going to think this is the coolest thing ever. We did. And you did. Yeah. So, and I took progress pictures because I'm a dork. Uh, this, is what I, the first, this is the first pass of cutting and drilling. So you can see that I have my, I cut the square out. I hadn't really done much of the corners yet. These are the, the bottom pieces. You see, um, it took me a few tries. So, things to remember. This is not wood. This, when you when you are making corners with this, you don't have any overlap. Wood has overlap. About a quarter of an inch, because that's how thick the MDF was. And so I had to, I called them seam allowances on my Facebook because I'm a native sewer and all of my friends who actually understand woodworking laughed at me and said they're called joints. I said that to my told my father, and he was like, oh. <laughs> "Remember this, you're gonna have to laugh for joints." Um, how did I the joints I did? I'll show you in a second. So this was the first. This was the first day. This was how far I got. This all came out of a four by four by four piece of MDF, and I was very dusty. I do not have pictures of myself or the dust. I was not taking dust selfies. Sorry. And then I had to put everything together. Uh, what I did was I got a pack of these little, you can buy the little dowels. So it's, it's kind of put together like Ikea furniture. Drill the hole, put the dowel in, drill the other hole, put the dowel in, put some glue, mallet it down, let it clamp it, let it dry. How do you match the holes? Lipstick. Very careful with Lipstick. Lipstick. Yeah, Lipstick. We, yeah, we've got loads of that. What? Yeah, we've got loads of that. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> Go to Walmart. Buy a 99 cent tube of lipstick. 
I went to Sally Beauty Supply and I bought a bottle of peroxide and I told the poor clerk that we were bleaching computers with it. <laughs> you can go to Walmart and buy a 99 cent to a lipstick and say, I'm using it for woodworking. <laughs> and if you can't, find a girl that'll do it for you. No, what you do is you get all of, you line up the pegs in the bottom holes, you put, uh, you smear the top with lipstick, you put the top on, and the lipstick is going to leave dots. You could probably do it like acrylic paint or something too, but I'm a girl, and I have old tubes of lipstick laying around, so hey, whatever. Or a wax pencil. Wax pencil would work, and then you kind of wipe it off, and then you, 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 know, you can drill, because when you drill, you're going to get rid of the wax anyway. So, and yeah, it took a couple tries. There are a few holes that are a little bigger than they should be, but I finally, you know, got everything put together, uh, hammered together, and lots and lots of wood glue to hold. So it's peg and dowel wood glue. These are also peg and dowel. And yes, you can see where I kind of didn't measure properly. Um, at some point you go into, I just want to get this done mode. So, but I'm going to talk, I did do a little bit of filling. Uh, I got some uh, wood in a tube. It's like wood filler, it's wood putty, and I did do some filling in of some of these joints, but not all of them. So this is what I was talking about with the routing. Um, I tried, I got one of those Dremel kits that's supposed to make your Dremel rotary tool in a route, is into a router, don't buy that. <laughs> Alex is nodding like he's done this before. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's garbage, because it doesn't have the stability, it kept there, this was not, this is, it was, it, it looked like the Rocky Mountains in there with that. This is when I got a real router. So like you can see, I've got these holes drilled for the mounting. I've got it, like I said, there's about an eighth of an inch, maybe, left. This is exactly the size of that black rim around the trackball. Literally, I could put the trackball in and the, this was tight enough that I, that it would, I mean, it wasn't going to take any weight, but it would hold it in place. Um, so this is when I finally got everything routed and I had the hole cut out. Um, what I did, so the mounting kits for the joystick came, I, bought, I was able to buy those. I had to get real creative to mount, to undermount the trackball. I didn't want any screws on the top of my thing. Some people like that, some people don't. Um, I got, these are called T-nuts. They uh, have a little teeth on them that you, you drill a hole, you pound them into the hole. They're threaded on the inside and you can screw up through them. And then I couldn't find bolts the right size, so I had to cut, I basically, I figured out where the bolts needed to be cut. I got my Dremel and my angle grinder, psh, custom sized bolts. Fun, fun. And then I decided that I was, because I was doing art, I wanted tea molding. This is a pain in the butt. Not gonna lie. You have to buy a special router bit. I wanted to bring the router bit, but it is uh, stuck in my router because I didn't take it out. And now my router is, now I need help because I have tiny weenie arms. But you have to, uh, you wanna make sure when you slot cut, you slot cut exactly in the middle. And it was fun, it was not fun. I do not like routing anymore. <laughs> routing is very dusty. Which brings me to, why did you decide you wanted to use art? Because, I'm a, because I like paint, I don't know. There's a lot of things I could have done. I could have just painted the whole thing black and called it a day. Uh, the bottom is painted, just spray painted gloss black. I could have done that to the whole thing. Um, I could have gotten spray paint and done, you know, all kinds of weird artistry things. I could have found somebody who liked to paint and do like a really cool design on it, whatever. Um, I was concerned that paint would chip. Uh, and I was, you know, and that was just not, you know, cool enough for me. I thought about other things. I thought about decoupaging it, which is where you take little pieces of paper and glue them down and then you put like a epoxy glaze over the whole thing. And then I decided I wanted to do a custom design and I was going to have it printed on vinyl. It was not, it was, this is, again, not a cheap trip. The, the, uh, I probably paid 60 bucks just for the, the vinyl. It's custom. 
It is harder to apply. It comes to you, it's sticky, and you have one shot to apply it correctly. But I just went into Photoshop uh, or GIMP, I can't remember which one I used. Uh, I did up my custom design. I taught myself how to use gradients. So I took an iron uh, arc reactor, I took the shield, and I just you know gradiented them from one to the other. That would you know taught myself some. But I knew I was going to need to do the molding on the edge because um, I was like, you know what, suck it up and deal. Because once I got something that looked like that in Photoshop, I was like, this is going to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, what this was the art file, and then I ended up um, when there this these are a layer that all the dots are a layer that I turned off when I had it printed. So when it came, when the art came to me, it didn't have any of the hole markers because I was afraid that the holes were, if the holes were not absolutely 100% perfectly where I drilled, you'd be seeing them. I took, out a, I took out some insurance. I didn't give myself any holes. I just cut them where they needed to go. It worked great. This is how it came to me in a tube. I had to stick it down. And then I had to use a mallet, and I had to put all this, the T-moldings. There's parts where the T-molding is glued, because when you go around the corners, you have to cut the T, the middle out, and if you don't hit it exactly right. You also, the, uh, you get one shot with the T-molding if you pull it back out. It's a holy pain in the butt to try and get back in, because you screw up the slot, you screw up the molding. So, you know, you know that, that, was, that was something I learned the hard way, which is why if you look at the corners, they're not great. And there are, there's glue. There's super glue involved. Like I said, and then uh, before I applied the art, I just shot the rest of it with some gloss back spray paint. Looked good. And then I had to wire and mount everything. Please be neat. Please be neat when you wire. Um, the first time, I don't have pictures of the bottom of the prototype. Because, because I don't want you to see the bottom of the prototype. Um, what did you use? I used bell wire. I went to Home Depot and I got the white, it comes white and red, so when you buy a foot of it, you actually get two feet. Um, that's what I used. You, it works. Um, and I could color code it, so all of the, the, you know, the, the red is for player one and the white is for player two. Um, you have to connect it. On the iPad, you just strip the end of the wire, stick it in, and screw it down. That's easy. Um, in my case, I used what are called micro switches, which are these little white things, and they each have two, they have plugs on them. They have a ground plug and they have a signal plug. The ground plug, uh, on, the, on the iPad, each one has a ground, and it has to be grounded. So you have to ground it to the, to the board. So that, these are the only, these little, um, spade connectors and their daisy chains. So there's wire connector, wire connector, wire connector. Those came with a gin mill and those are the only things out of that thing I actually used. I used those for the ground and then I hand wired the rest. Uh, it's not, I did, that's one of the things I still haven't done because it's done and it works. So why should I go back and fuck with it? Um, you should probably, I should go through and solder all my connections, but they don't seem, they seem to be really stable. I know I'm bad. Um, or if you wanted to go, and I, did, I didn't have the crimping tool, you can totally get the spade on uh, the crimping tool and put your spade connectors on and do the whole thing like that. Mount the controller boards. Do a dry run. Don't mount anything until you know it is exactly where you want it. Make sure you have enough wire. Get more wire than you think you're going to need because you're probably going to mess up. And can make sure you can connect to your device. And then go through and wire everything. And then test it and then it doesn't work and then you figure out what you didn't wire right and then, and then you keep going. You lather, rinse, repeat until everything works. You hook it up to whatever device, which is, well, that's a whole other ball of wax. And you get something that looks like this. Or that. And it looks like that underneath. Like I saw so you, like I, all the white goes to player two. 
All the red goes to player one. I made sure to mount it so that it made sense to me. Um, coins, are, coins are over here. This is the track, or this is the spinner. This is the track ball. It's upside down. Where do you go to get help besides me? And yes, if people decide you do this and you want to get a hold of me on the forums or whatever, that and the Facebook or on the mailing list, I'm perfectly happy to answer questions. Uh, who answered my questions? A bunch of people at forums or at kcontrols.com. Some of them are nice, some of them will give you a hard time. Because you decide that you, you know, because you need to get over your love of symmetry and put the, put the spinner in the corner. No, 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 <laughs> symmetry. I have issues. Uh, Altamark also has great tech support if you have any questions about any of their, like what, I had a couple of questions about setting up the iPad and like they were within 24 hours. And if you have ish, uh, find a woodworker. Dad, what do I do? My dad knew I was doing this because where did all those power tools come from? That was my Christmas present that year. <laughs> I built those prototypes in October and for, for what do you want for Christmas? Saber saw, router, drill. Mouse. <laughs> my father was a, my father went grocery went Christmas shopping for me that year. He was very happy. <laughs> and I did call him a couple times and be like, Dad, what do I do? He's like, Did he borrow any of it? What? Did he borrow any of it? Uh, he's five hours away. Oh, okay, well, he well. has all of that stuff and more. If I'd have been smart, I would have gone home for a week and done yeah. this with him. Yeah. Because he has a drill press and he has a table saw and he has a joiner and he has. <laughs> All kinds of cool stuff that I wish I'd had. And this other, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was my dusty, dirty, disgusting, gross adventure. But at the end of it, I had this really cool thing, and it's reasonably portable. This is it. Uh, I have seen ones where people make them completely portable. You put a Raspberry Pi in here, and then you just plug it right in. I, if you really wanted to get fancy and you could find a small enough projector, you could actually put the projector in and have it all in one. I don't know if they make small enough projectors, but I feel like they do if you have enough money. <laughs> um, by the time I got, I don't like I said, I don't want to think about how much is that sitting in front of me right now. But that's how I did it. That's how this thing came to be. Uh, it was fun. It was a labor of love. Uh, Bill have asked me, you know, first year I had it. Will you build me one? No. <laughs> this is designer original. I'd say I destroyed the plans, but obviously I didn't because I'm showing them to you. Build your own. Um, so that's basically, we've got a couple minutes. Any questions? When you went for joysticks, did you go for a full right way? Uh, these are. These are, they have four switches, but they function as eight ways. I don't have restrictor plates on them. And that's something, uh, I have seen boards where they have something like this, and then they have a four-way joystick up here because purists are there, purists that only want to play Pac-Man on a four-way joystick because they don't like it when it slides into the, but I wanted to be able to play the most amount of games, but have a really clean layout. Because this thing's going to be, I didn't want it to be intimidating. <coughs> if you walk out, I've seen somewhere, you know, you've got this, you've got the Tron set up here, and you've got the four-way sticks, and the eight-way sticks, and you've got all this stuff going on, and I'm like, I want it to be user-friendly. So if you're going to play like a Pac-Man or whatever, you just kind of have to suck it up and deal. <laughs> you're like, why did you, why did you go Because I don't, and I don't want to have to go underneath and putts with, res res with restrictor plates. They do make, they're a little bit pricey, but you can get a joystick that has um, on a switch on the top that'll go from four way to eight way. It'll have, it has a built in restrictor plate. They also have one you can pull up, which is what I got, but I'm not I'm that side of side with them, which is why I asked. Yeah, no, they I didn't, I honestly, yeah, because I, 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 I saw those and I read the room. Yeah. Uh, you're not the only one who feels that way. They got some really poor reviews. And they kind of expensive. So, again, I wasn't, also wasn't looking to break the bank. It depends on what, because I want to play Pac-Man, but I also want to play, be able to roll and do, you know, Hadouken. Anybody else? Do you remember what was special about the Tron joystick? It has, it reads like some horrible amount of positions because it's it's just this very, I, I know, I, I honestly don't because I looked, I took one look at it and I, looked, I was like, Tron's not on my radar. 
Um, it's also, it's got like a trigger on it, and I know like it reads, it's, it has some really weird way it reads. If you Google Tron joystick, you're going to find 16 million people explaining it to you. What would you have done differently now that you've finished it? I would not have used team molding. <laughs> and I probably, I would have asked, I would have gotten more help. I would have gotten my father to help me because I'm not super, it, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so a little, some of the little things bother me. Um, um, also, I'm not, I'm not sure what I would do different. I might have added, I might go, I might have gone with eight buttons just for some of the more modern fighting games. Is, is the bottom open like yeah, that? Yeah, the bottom's open. Uh, did you consider putting a plywood yeah. thing? But then I just, but then because I also wanted to be able to use it as a teaching device, mm -hmm. I didn't want to take it off all the time. Also, if you have the bottom open like that, it sits better on the rug. It well, this sits on hardwood, but I usually set it. It has. Uh, I have little felt bits that it sits on. I didn't bring little felt bits, but um, if you use it on a rug, then you know, put things and grab some yeah. floor. Yeah, and I just I want to be able people to be able to see the bottom. So the, the keyboard and the joysticks have a, a the buttons and the joysticks have a keyboard presentation. Yeah. So you probably said it, but the spinner and the trackball. How the are spinner they? and the trackball it sees as mice. As a matter of fact, if I hook it up to the mini, if you uh, if you go into just OSX and you roll the trackball, it'll roll the mouse pointer around. And the light guns, I know it also sees as mice. If anybody has any other questions, I'll be around. Um, I'm more than happy to answer questions about this, and I'll have it probably not immediately, but by tomorrow sometime I'll have it back upstairs so you guys don't have to all play with it. Thank you.